Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 13th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend, Guy published a couple quick instructions on how to actually ship uh, Microsoft DNS logs uh, to Elasticsearch. Couple steps required here. First of all, Logstash, of course, is used for some of the data manipulation and uh, the actual uh, shipping. But then you also need to enable the debug logging in Windows in order to obtain appropriate logs. It's a very common challenge. I've seen many people having a hard time getting a good insight into DNS logs on Windows systems. Of course, you could use network logging, but it's not often that easy to really get access to all the network segments that you need to in order to log these queries. So there's another alternative that you have by just logging them directly from the system. And of course, DNS logs uh, based on the size of the logs is probably uh, the most uh, useful log that you can have in your network. So something you definitely uh, should get a handle on and uh, should collect. And a quick update regarding the MSHTML vulnerability in Microsoft Office CVE 2021-4044-4. Nothing new from Microsoft here. The advisory was last updated on September 9th, but on GitHub, we now have what looks like a rather reliable proof of concept exploit, where really all you have to do is insert the DLL that you would like to execute and then run one Python script to create the exploit and a second Python script to actually then run the server delivering the document. So super easy to exploit now, almost negligible if you are a bad guy and not at least giving this exploit a try. So as a defender, yes, be ready to be hit with this particular exploit in the next few days. Hopefully we'll get an update from Microsoft by Tuesday, patch Tuesday, of course. But uh, like I said, no real update here from Microsoft as far as a patch goes. And as I mentioned on Friday, the uh, workarounds that Microsoft does provide, they do help somewhat, but they're not perfect. They can be bypassed, so deploy them, but be aware of their limitations. And we have yet another quite ingenious lock screen bypass for Microsoft Windows. This is based on an older lock screen bypass, CVE 2020-1398, but appears to be unpatched at this point. In order to exploit this, if you see the system with the locked uh, screen and you click on the I forgot my pin option, then you're being redirected to a password reset uh, feature for your Microsoft account, assuming of course that you used a Microsoft account uh, for uh, the system. And as you're walking through these dialogues, there is a link to an HTML page that offers uh, more help. And this then spawns in an explorer in the background, which can then in turn be used uh, to elevate your privileges and gain access to the system. And that last thing was basically the same issue that happened with the earlier vulnerability. However, in the earlier vulnerability, the link popped up in the sticky keys dialog. So, uh, but the basic principle was the same. By clicking on the link, you're able to start an explorer on the locked system and then use an explorer to gain access to the system. And Citrix released an update for its hypervisor. Five different vulnerabilities are being addressed in this update. Three of them can lead to a host compromise where essentially malicious code executed in a guest VM may be able to take over the host. So patch it in particular if you're using your hosts for untrusted users or for example, for malware analysis. 
And GitHub released uh, details regarding a couple of vulnerabilities in the Node.js tar and arborist packages. Uh, the reason they're important is, well, first of all, tar, of course, is uh, the uh, tape archive format. Good old uh, Unix tar files can be uh, parsed with that particular extension and also expanded. And that's exactly where the problem happens. If uh, you're not careful and you're just untarring arbitrary files, you may of course overwrite existing files, which could then lead to arbitrary code execution. So make sure you're updating your NPM packages. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.